Yep, but let us know what station is out on 7-9. You dirty J. Nick's Flies Gown Radio. DJ Cash, the fly Haitian kid. I'm in the building. President, I'm checking in one time for the one time. As you know, man, we always interview uh, all the famous individuals, and we got a very, very super, super man, famous person. I'm in the building for one time for the one time. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, congratulations, you got the job. You got the job. Flies on the Man, Mr. Future's in the building. What's up, bro? What's good with it? How you feeling, man? I'm good. New album. What album, is, what album number is this? Seven. 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 Mm. Okay, including in 10 mixtapes, years, right? Included mixtapes. No, it like can't 30. be. Yeah, I was about to say, it can't be included mixtapes. Included, included mixtapes, like 30. 30. That's 30, still a big, 30. like, seven albums in 10 years is even a lot. Of, I mean, it's a very big yeah. accomplishment. Yeah. So, 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 what's your drive now, man? Like, is, is it still just all the music? Like, you all got music. the money, you know what I'm saying? Music. Got the cars. Music. 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 Forever. Forever music. I love the music, love making music. So what would you tell some of these cats out here, man? Because it's a lot of cats that want to rap, but it's like they get one hit, you know what I'm saying? They tend to trickle off and think they made it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you, but that's the wave now, you know what I'm saying? They get a hit. It's, big. It's, it's, it's different times because you get a hit now. You know what I'm saying? You might, you can get more than what you was getting when I was jumping off. And I get it. When you was getting a hit, you probably had to have three, four to get the money they get right now just with one hit. So now you get one hit, you, you, get, you just get comfortable. You know what I'm saying? It's easy to get comfortable, I feel like now. Versus when I was coming, it just took so much. It's like one hit, it wasn't enough. Tony Montana wasn't enough. Ma- Magic wasn't enough. Same downtown, not enough. Like they still don't believe. You know what I'm saying? They right. still wasn't believing. Got to keep coming back consistent, consistently. Drop an album, they still won't believe. You drop Turn on the Lights, singing, whatever. You can rap <laughs> backwards. They still like, is he still future? Is the future, right. future thing? Like, so I don't know. I just kept being consistent. Do you, do you think that it's still, it's still to this day that like you have like you have to prove yourself? Every time around, like even now with me dropping this album, it's just me having to prove my prove prove myself again that I can, you know what I'm saying, come back and be consistent and be persistent and make some good music. But do you think that could be a good thing though? Because it's kind of like you come, you do something huge, and then they're like, man, future, he can't top that. Like you know, is it motivation though? There's yeah, motivation. You got to be your own competition at this point. Like you said, you done achieved so much. Like what else you can do besides compete with yourself and top your last thing? So. It's just about just staying hungry, you know what I'm saying, and never giving up and just just wanting more than anything. Like, make sure your passion just always there. Right. Do you think Do you think your personal life overshadows your music? Nah, because I don't really tell no more about my person. I feel like 2018, it was just me just being, like, just freelancing and just saying whatever I feel, and that's why people just probably took towards it so much like they did, like the quotes and whatever. Cause they never pretty much heard me express myself in certain ways, mm. or react so, so so soon to certain things that was put out. That's do you think that's why certain things get blown out of proportion? Like when you, cause you've been quiet for so long, then when you do say something it's like, "Oh, future, future yeah, says get, this," it, yeah, exactly. That's that's the whole thing. It just get blown out of proportion. It don't even be about what how I feel at that time. It just be about the answer that I answered that day. You know what I'm saying? That day I might not be feeling like that, but I'm just answering the question from like. It might be a 2017 question, a 2016 question someone want to ask since I'm doing interviews or whatever. So I'm asking it from a 2016 perspective, not from where I'm at right, right now, how I feel right now. It's just, you know what I'm saying? I'm just speaking on it for my fans. Like, what what about that time? How were you thinking then? Right. More so like that. Okay. Well, so what actually happened with the Wendy Williams situation? Like, what what made that contra- – like, what controversy did y'all have from that? It wasn't nothing because I always did I, – I went to a show two, three times. Okay. It was good. You know what I mean? It was just the whole thing about she putting the – um. My kid's mother up there. Like I really didn't think she should put uh two like two two of the uh women up there because they don't want to be a part of like the future, future, the future right. baby mama, whatever, whatever. And I understand them, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to get the backlash from whatever come with me. And nobody don't know you. Nobody knows you, nobody know your Instagram, the people you can walk through the malls, you can walk go shopping with the kids, no one knows, we don't put no pictures out. We cool. If pictures come out, they do, but we're not trying to put it on Wendy Williams' show with 10 million views. Right. As a woman, I felt like she should have been, like, trying to protect that, you know what I'm saying, and just and find and got winning more depth with, the, with, like, who she should put up and who she shouldn't put up. Right. She could have left out a blank face like she did. One of the faces was blank. She could have right. left out all the blank faces if she wasn't familiar with them. Right. Instead of just throwing them into a, a pot where they don't understand it. She don't, like, the ones, one of the ones they put up that she don't understand his lifestyle. Right. At all. She don't want to be a part of it at all. And that was just the whole thing. When she was up there, the backlash, she was, um, even how she responded to to me, she was, it was like, she never had, we done been, I've been in the game, what, nine years, right. and nobody know her. Right. 
you know what I'm saying, from what or whatever they know from like my personal life, my friends know, but at the same time, the world wasn't too much of in our business. So it was just her. She just was like, man, she didn't want to be a part of that. So how, how do you deal with the just as far as like just the people always got something to say? You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like I, like you just congratulations, you just had a new one. Yeah, you know what I'm okay. I, how do you like how do you deal with that? Like that stress. You know what I'm saying? If somebody got something to say. Cause you got how many kids you got now? Six. Six kids. Yeah. How many moms? Six. Six. So how do you deal with that backlash as far as then like like people calling you this and calling you that and saying future got all these kids going all, all everywhere and especially when you're trying to do music. Like when you're trying to do your, your, Man, your it, job. It, it, I just see it as a, as a situation that just like they don't understand like personally how you deal with people or how you, people deal with you. You know what I'm saying? They could be if everything great, I'm never gonna leave a great situation. Right. Period. No matter what. Like I'm a businessman. I know great business deals. So if I'm in a great relationship, I'm not gonna leave. You know what I mean? It might right. not be fit for both of us. So it's just like I'm not willing to stick around to try to make something work that I feel like I'm not happy. In. Right. I don't feel like nobody should be able to stick around if they not happy or whatever the situation may be. But we found a way to make it work for us and I found a way to make my situation work for me. It might not work for anyone else, but it's working for me. Okay. I want to ask you about the documentary that you put out um, with Apple Music. Like, what what came? Like, I know this was like the last project that you had for your uh, for your deal. But what came to the point where you just said, "Let me go ahead and put it all out there"? Because you hardly ever really, you know, talk. And nobody really hears from you other than you know through social media. So, what made you want to put it all out there? Um, and my friends, you know, what I'm saying, my everybody around me on the team was like, "It's time for you to talk. It's time." Like, like you say, people were giving that. They, they might be thinking a certain kind of way or just like, oh, it, it, he a womanizer, he not with his kids, he not, is this, this, is it that. It was just me to put an end to a lot of the he say, she say, you know what I'm saying, and just give you a little insight of my personal life. Right. Mm. So, so, I mean, so how did you feel about finally opening up? Like, do you feel better that you that you got a chance to speak and tell your side? Have you closed a couple doors that, that was open? Yeah, I feel like I op- I I closed a couple of doors, but I also might open a few. <laughs> I was just about to say that. open a few of them too. But at the end of the day, it just come with the territory. You know what I'm saying? You don't know how people react to certain things. You don't know what's gonna be good, what's gonna be negative reaction. So it's just like me being me. I just have to be me. And if they get a negative a negative reaction for me being myself, it is what it is. If it's something great come about it, then I guess you know what I'm saying. That's what it is. But at the end of the day, I'm always just spreading positive love and. I got great intentions for everything I do, even though I might come off crying and harsh or whatever at some times. But I'm just trying to defend myself at times, and I'm also just want to be able to connect with my fans and get my side of the story without everybody thinking like it's ill will right. put into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just me responding as a man. Okay. So so, so, do you actually even have problems with Russell Westbrook? Because that's, I mean, we're, no, Russell, we don't have no problem. Because everybody, it seems like in social media, it seems like it's a social Future media problem. this guy. Right. No, I don't hate him. Not, n- totally not uh, the deal. It was just the way we was carried as far as being handled with Future. It was right. baby Future. It wasn't nothing. I don't have nothing against him. Man, I'm happy for them. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy in my life. Why would I? I want to take away from nobody else right. if they happy like, and, and curse my blessings. Right. Like, I don't come from that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how to win like that. Right. How do you feel when people comment on it, though? Like, and they might not know what's going on. Because like we've been saying, like you have been quiet. When you hear a line like Jay-Z say, you know, playing football in the future, niggas yeah, playing football Yeah, but then when Jay-Z, but I talked to him, I, I didn't really say that. I don't want, uh, man, we didn't, I didn't mean it like that. Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. and I was just like, you supposed to be bigging up the rap community. You need to let the, you know what I'm saying? Like, the NFL deal with the NFL. Right. You supposed to be bigging up me, anything. Right. We come from the trenches. Together, right? I come from the streets. You come from the streets. You supposed to be bigging me up, right? You supposed to be giving that no no negative uh, attention. You know what I'm saying? Like right. for a, a hot line, that something gonna always be out. Like my fault, all that. Bad, bad. But it's out now, so it's just like it ain't no my fault or whatever. Whatever it is, it is what it is. You know right. what I'm saying? I ain't even tripping off him. Like you say, like I'm trying to get to where I'm going, and ain't nobody gonna stop me or whatever going on. The talking and the captions or whatever the memes. It can't stop me because it's a vision that I have and it's goals that I have done set out for myself that I got to get there no matter what. So, and I got to commend you because, I mean, for people that that might not know, you, I've always seen you with your kids. So I got to definitely salute you on that. How do you deal with uh, the, just the family life and being there for your kids and still doing music and traveling in Australia and out the country? Like, how do you deal with that? But my kids, they're a part of my life, so they understand. Mm-hmm. They think it's fun. Right. Oh, Dad, you going on tour? Oh, we come some days. We gonna come out sometimes. You know, they they adjust to this lifestyle that that we have. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying? 
I be missing my kids, and it is this is my lifestyle. I've been doing it for a decade. Right. So after a decade, I probably done adjusted to mm-hmm. how everything is supposed to be, and they done adjusted as well. Okay. How, how does it feel to be here after a decade? Because I remember having a long conversation with you after um, your second album dropping. You were like, man, listen, Cash, I'm switching up. I'm doing things the way I want to do it. You know, I kind of was like listening to certain people as as where the vision should be, and I'm gonna do it moving forward. I'm I'm gonna just do it the way I want to do it. Yeah. So how does it feel to like kind of be where you are now with your vision, your own creative control, and your like? How does it feel to kind of prove people wrong, like? You know, and, and, and as all the accolades you have now. It feel great because it's like I was being myself. Right. Even through any backlash, I was being myself that got me right here. You know what I'm saying? I don't went through so many, uh, more backlash probably five years ago, four or five years ago than now. And I was able to sustain and be able to conquer and do certain things around that. After that, being able to come back and just just making my name felt, making my presence felt. Right. Again and again and again, you know what I'm saying, through whatever. And it's just, man, always be yourself. Right. So so what, what's next for future? Um, movies? Not yet with movies, but more of an executive. Being an executive and getting behind other artists and signing artists and really being in their career and being behind them. And just not just telling them about the music, but just telling them about the business and understand when they're taking these budgets and they're taking certain things that they got to get paid back. Right. So when you ball and maybe you should save your money if you want to buy some jewelry, and you may should save your money if you want to give cars away. If you want to whatever you want to do, you might want to save it so you can get yourself out that deal at a time when you might don't want to be in business with your business partner, and they and they present you with a bill. They present you with a seven eight million dollar bill. You can be like, huh? <laughs> he got the money for your studio budgets. He got the money for the videos y'all spent on me. Y'all don't have to recoup. I just want to be out of deal and make sure I get my percentages right off my album and just make sure the business deal good enough where you can feed your kids. You know what I'm saying? Make right. sure your kids straight off the albums when you when you're not around no more, y'all still be able to get the residuals and it ain't no it ain't up for grabs like who, who can sign off on this or who who uh who own the masters and you know what I'm saying, who right. own the rights to his music. Like you gotta get that squared away right now while you popping. While you popping you use that for leverage with the label. Like, man, let me see them contracts. Right. Man, who own these songs, man? Who own who own these masters? Like, how much I owe y'all now? After right. every album, you need to audit the, the label and tell them how much how much I owe you. Like, so because they'll tell you after the fourth album on the, oh you owe us for the first album, or oh, what about the and studio session you booked? Now? Yeah. What about those buses, or the 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 flights we took care of, and your friends and your hotels and the food, and then that started being a big bill. But you on the fifth album. Now you're on your fifth album, but they're telling you about a bill from the second album and the first albums and the third album to get you to sign again or whatever, whatever, to get some more money out you. Or you got to make sure your business right. So that's what I want to be for my artists, to make sure from day one you got 100%. Like So whatever you put in, you get out. Right. Work, whatever work you put into it, you're going to be able to reap the benefits off of it. You know, a lot of artists make two, three hundred million, and at the end of their two hundred, three hundred million, they done spent it all. They got to still sign a new deal. Right. Be like you ain't save one hundred and fifty million of that. <laughs> so, so what's next for Epic? Like, like you, you kept a good relationship with Epic. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how many more albums do you even have with Epic? Is, is your I mean, deal my, done? My or plan you just really just to be like to be the president of Epic. Mm. That's big. That's the next goal. That's my next goal. So you there? So you, so you, you totally, totally invest in Epic. I'm totally invested in Epic. I man, Epic. Totally. Invested. So who's the next artist that if you were to bring an artist out? Or if there's somebody that you know of right now, who would be the next artist that you're molding to come out of uh, Free Band? You know, my little cousin Guap. You know what I'm saying? I got Lil Woo. got Doughboy. It's other artists also, but just those three from now, from what they're doing, the work ethic that they put in. Yeah, Tess also in Baltimore. You know what I'm saying? The work ethic that they put in is is uh is about to match up. You know what I'm saying? Their hard work about to pay off. But at the same time, I'm looking for new artists too. They've been around. That's my cousin. That's family. I want new artists. I want singers. It don't matter, you know what I mean? I just want someone with a crazy work ethic. For sure. Mm-hmm. When when you talk about like um showing artists their business and you know who has to sign off on what, that's language I don't think a lot of them understand. Is that something you had to go through and is that something that you went through? I know with like the whole Rocco situation cuz I think a lot of people don't understand what happened. It just hears like oh there's a problem with paperwork and you guys kind of fell out. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, it's a it's a thing where you just want to be more involved in your career. Some artists don't want to be involved in their career right. in that way. 
be involved in the business, going to all the meetings and understanding how they recruit stuff and understanding about their masters and understanding who you pay back or how to get paid. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They just know they're doing their show money. Right. And they get show money, they get publishing checks. Don't other don't understand the YouTube checks. Don't understand the SoundCloud checks. Don't understand other checks you could be getting that's not just show money or whatever the case may be. If somebody sample your records 20 years from now, you want to be able to get paid from that. Right. How you going to collect that money when you're not the one that can sign off on that? Somebody else going to be getting paid off of that. Right. But if you don't know that, then you're just oblivious to the fact that you can be financially stable for the rest of your life. Mm. You just didn't set yourself up to be stable. You just you set yourself up where you're going to have to do shows all your life. Right. You set yourself up where you're going to have to drop albums all your life. Or you're not going to be getting paid. If you don't drop an album, you're not going to get paid. But when you set your stuff up, when you got residuals coming in, no matter what, it's because of the way your deal was structured. Mm. You got to structure your deal where you get residuals no matter what. Like your residuals going to keep coming in. Like you can stop this year, but you're going to be getting paid from shit from three years ago. Right, right. right. The rest of your life, right. Because you set it up right, but you're going to be getting 100% off of it, not a percentage off of your money Ooh. that you got to pay 100% back. Mm. These cats getting 100% of money, you might get a deal for $3 million and you got to pay taxes on $3 million, but you walked away with one point eight. Right. 1.5. But you got to pay 3 million. So you got to think about that 1.5 that you're spending. You're really supposed to be paying that for taxes. Now right. you balled out. Now you got to get another check to make up for the last check. Mm. It's like, you so you know, taxes on a new check. Now you're working check to check. Yeah, the check's big, but right. you're working for million dollars to million dollar checks or five million dollars, five million dollar check because you get a five million dollar check. Half of it go to taxes. You spent a half a million, a million on jury. You ain't got nothing left. You had to get your manager something, but your manager didn't tell you you got to pay money on the five million. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, at, at what point did you like that you that you just like focused on the business? I know you know when you first started. You know what I'm saying? And when you first started as an artist, you hype. You know what I'm saying? At what point did you say you know what future need to get all future business together? And honest, honest. After Pluto, I was, it was all fun and games. Right. When honest came. It was like now I need to know what I'm recouping, how much I need to pay back, who I need to pay back. And who I owe some money because I want to be able to, like I say, I want to have residuals. I want to be able to be 100% in control over my career. I don't want to work all these nights in the studio and somebody else get to say so for how I move, when I move, or right. when I drop. So what finally clicked in your head to be like, you know what, I need to figure this out? Did somebody talk to you? Because I know for a fact like, a lot of le- record labels will not give you that game. Will not Nobody going to give you that game. Money. That's why I want to give my artists. That's what I'm going to give my artists that no other label can give you. Mm-hmm. No one around give them in that game because how are they going to make money? Right. But I put myself in a position where I can tour. I don't, I don't have a touring deal, but I put myself where I got a business deal with my with the tour. When we 50-50, we got a buyout deal. There's certain deals that you can put in place. Right. Where when, I, when you fill up these stands and you sell it out, at sell out, you get a bonus. Mm. But at sell out, you might get a bonus, but your bonus ain't going to you. Mm. Your bonus been going to somebody else that whole time. When that bonus could have bought a house, the gene had to go in your show money to buy the house. Mm. Wow. So you start moving that money around and start maneuvering like, man, that, that bonus money could be them cars. That bonus money could be them the jury that you don't even have to, your show money could be all money you stack up. But now the kid the, is more cat spending the show money and they not worried about that sellout, what you making off this, what you making off just VIP sales or what you making off, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm getting 100% of everything, and then I break it down to who I want to break it down to. I don't want mm-hmm. nobody to give me what they want out of my money. Right. So with this album, I know usually every album you make, you're in a particular space, and it kind of reflects, um, you know, in your in your music. What was your headspace and, and your kind of just your idea for this album? The idea was just bridge the gap of every album that I dropped from the beginning to my mixtapes to now just the, the, the music. Like making sure everything connect, make sure everything sound as one, but also giving my fans a different moment at different times of my life mm. throughout this whole album. I, I think with this album, like, um, I know I, I read some comments that you, that you kind of like stop drinking a lean, you know what I'm saying, kick the cup or whatever like that. Like, this album sounds real sober. <laughs> this don't sound like high future. It don't sound like smoking weed future. It don't. It sounds so clear. Like, what made you decide to you like it? Was that the whole? point of this particular album like let me just give these people and show these people I can I can really just go off you know yeah, what I'm saying be able sure. to understand everything you say that's a part of it but it's just me just growing out of things like I grew out of a lot of things like I don't want to stop doing anything right I want to grow out of it I don't want to be like man today I need to do it because they say I need to stop doing it right I'm not going to do it then I'm going to do it more right but if you give me time and just help me and you help me through the process I have people around me that's been helping me and everybody that's just been 
been super encouraging, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I still had to be something that I wanted to do myself. Right. Like, if I stop something, I want to be able to, I I, I look, I, uh, grew out of it. More so, I stopped because my family told you, you need to stop doing this, you need to stop doing this. I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. But if it's like it just getting old to me. Right. It's something that I don't need, but not even... Even to this day, like, it ain't a thing that I be like, man, I'm turning my head away. Just I don't do it no more because I don't want to do it. Right. I just stopped just because I stopped. It ain't like I was like, oh, I need to go to the rehab or something. Right. Or, <laughs> nah, I just, I'm like tired of walking around with a cup all day. Right. See, because a lot of people say, I mean, honestly, like, every time we interview a lot of the young cats, they say, really, they started drinking lean because of you. Right. <laughs> like, you and your music had a big influence. I think probably the past, what, a couple interviews past that we had? three four interviews, a lot of the artists have said that their drug influence has come from me. And that because <clears> me <throat> coming from the streets and me just having raw talent. For sure. And not not knowing the effect that I can have on the world. You know what I'm saying? That's right. just me being original, me being cre- just creating from my environment. I use everything to make it to make it power. I turn every negative situation, whether... It be coming from the hood selling drugs. It be coming from the hood using drugs. It be coming from whatever it is that you come from a negative environment. I just try to turn everything to a positive. Even though it was negative thing that, that I'm talking about, I just made it my thing. You know what I'm saying? And just people reacted to that way. I feel like, man, that's just what you, the position I was put in. You know what I'm saying? I think what people should look at, though, is the growth. Growth, though, too. Yeah, the growth is the most... The, the main thing, like, you can come from anywhere, but, like, you're right. not going to be sleeping in apartments after your 10th album. It's like, you're not. If you're still doing it, you don't want to grow. Mm-hmm. You're just doing it just to be cool or something. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm but not trying to growth, fit in. But even the growth is, like, you coming in as an artist and, and being like, yeah, I, I drink some lean, I, you know, whatever. But And then growing into the man you are today, like, I decided I'm going to stop to do this or this and this exactly. and that and the third. So I think sometimes people should focus on the growth. Cause like you said, you came, you come from nothing. That was your environment around you. That's all you know. Yeah. So to come from that and then grow into what you are now, sometimes that needs to be recognized as well. You know what I mean? Exactly. So Big Boy just recently bought back um, the dungeon, the dungeon studio, the dungeon family house. <clears throat> so do you think you you could like see yourself putting a lot more uh, investments into Atlanta, like like a lot of different people are doing right now? Cause like a lot of people. I do. Are I, I, I got a lot of investments that, that's in Atlanta. Everything I I do, <laughs> I got a lot of. So, so what's, what's next? I don't want to name the investments, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, yeah, <for> sure. <laughs> like, this is where I'm from, so if people be riding by places that I, but at the end, and then your family listens, like, what do you own? I need to get a piece of it. Or, right, right, or the tax right. man. You're like, hey, you didn't list that. Uh, <laughs> no, we got to pay them taxes. <laughs> yeah, we didn't exactly. list that. Boy, so, they'll come and get you right. 40 years from now. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next, man? Have you ever thought about doing franchise? Like, I know... Um, uh, Rick Ross is real big on buying like wing stops and stuff like that. Like any, you see any 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 deals like that coming in the near future? Yeah, for sure. We're doing franchise business. Okay, we got restaurants. A lot of things. I like to be investing behind the scenes. Right. Because I want my haters to come to my restaurants. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. To support the business. That's I don't want to tell no one right. that like, no, all haters are welcome. Right. So what you what would you tell some of these young cats out here in Atlanta? You know what I'm saying, just about as far as moving forward. You know what I'm saying, as far as your artistry. What would you give? What kind of advice would you give some of these young cats that's trying to do music? Man, check your paperwork. Mm. Check the paperwork out because you don't want to wait to your third or fourth album to be talking about. Hey man, let me see that. Let, try to audit your label or audit your accountant. Make sure you check on them accountants every like once a month. You know what I'm saying? Maybe twice a month just to really get the game or just understanding what they paying and how they paying it because. They can pay a bill and pay themselves at the same time. Every right. time they pay a bill, they pay themselves. Right. What's the biggest thing they should look out for? Because I don't know if you know, like, um, Dede was just online the other day talking about his paperwork and how it's messed up, and he's trying to get out, and he just and how, and how, he feels uh, stuck. Yeah, you know what I, I mean. Feel, yeah, so I what's feel the like biggest thing artist, they should look out man, for? Some damn near ninety percent are artists sign of a, 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 a bad deal, right? Because of the situation you in and in, in, in where you was at at the beginning of the deal. Mm-hmm. But then they come a point where you and your business partner, y'all both know, and they know that, like, man, it, it become a fair situation. So it ain't even trying to get out. It just make it fair. Make it where I owe you a lot, and then I'm taking out, I'm going back in my pocket. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to go back in your pocket because at the end of the day, it's a career. You want to set everyone up to be rich forever, not just saying why they're doing music. You're only rich when you're doing music. Right. Right. Do you do you feel like you um you don't get your credit just due? Like as far as like you've been in the game ten years and you really kinda influence a whole new generation of music. Like, you know what I'm saying? As far as much I believe much I'm gonna start getting my credit my my credit uh due, but 
at the end of the day, like I, I went 10 years with no credit and I'm at the place where I'm at. So I got to be like, do you want the credit or do you want to be here? Right. I'd rather be here. Right. And now we can make up for the lost times. You know what I'm saying? It's a new beginning to new beginnings. And I feel like that's what it is for my career. Me being a bigger, better executive, even being a better friend, you know what I'm saying? It's just knowing how to maneuver with friendships in the limelight and success. You got to be able to balance out everything. And, and you know what I'm saying? When you first come in, you like let a thing, you let you let more things just shy away from things and let everything die out because you're trying to focus on the music and get to where I'm at right now. So now I'm here and I'm blessed to be here and still on top. It's like I need to be able to make up for the wrongs that I didn't do the first time. And I'm learning from my mistakes. Right. So how, how do you feel about, how do you deal with people like just always having a handout? Like at this point, everybody know, you know, I mean, they can look online and see, uh, have a guesstimate of how much you make or how much you bring yeah. in. How do you deal with everybody having their hands and always wanting something? I know I heard in your voice when you did the interview, you know what I'm saying, with, with Big Bang Black, and it really found, sounded like you were kind of like, not really stressed out, but just like, it gets on your nerves at this point. It's, it's irritating. You irritate me at this point because the money ain't going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. Like, you can't ask me for every time you get into a situation for something or you got your hand out. But it just come with the territory, you know what I'm saying? You just got to know how to say no. Mm. How long did it take you to develop that? <laughs> like, that no word? Because you were a very given person. Like, you, you, I feel like you always look out for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Even with looking out for somebody, it's still not enough. Mm. Their limits might not be the limits that I have. So you looking out, it don't be enough for them. It's enough for you, but it's not enough for them. It's never enough. It's like going to the bank. People go to the bank and try to withdraw money knowing they got no money. In it. And then the receipt come out and it's like, you over. It just knew, but you had to stop by the bank to go and just still punch your number and your your bank number in to get some money out, and you know you ain't have no money in it. People right. go to swipe their card knowing they have no money and see, man, did it go through? And if it go through, they ain't gonna say nothing. They just gonna go overdraft. They gonna over draft out their account. Every time. So think thinking about it, if it's you and you in front of your face, I'm gonna keep punching, right. <laughs> punching the machine trying to get something out of it. But that's because I think sometimes people don't know the value of things. Like, let's say, for instance, if you do a favor with somebody, you give them a verse for a set, for just for argument's sake, and they feel like, damn, bro, you got to do this, though. You got to do this. Like, bro, you know how much my verse costs? I just right. gave you that for free. But they not looking at it as... I don't want you to give them a the verse for free, show up to the video for free, right. pay for your clothes for free, <laughs> your gas for free, there. <laughs> fly there, whatever you got to do for free. Right. Like, be on time. Right. Stay here for four, five hours for free. Right. Like, you just super... They don't think about no superstar in their head. It's just about what they need to get ahead in their life. Like, mm. It's never a fair situation when somebody asking you to do a favor for them. Right. Speaking of which, I got this album coming out. I need a verse. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Cash, you can get so many verses. I need a verse, bro. I this need is the a first verse. verse you done asked after 10 years. You need one. Right, right, you deserve right, it at this bro. point. So, so, how, so how do you deal with like some of the cats making bad decisions? Cause I, like I said, I, I was listening to the podcast. You also kind of stressed the fact that some cats are asked for a watch or a chain before they ask for them to get their license together for them to be able to drive somewhere. Like, yeah, I just want because when I got in the game, it's like, if you didn't have an education and we know where we come from, Instead of asking me for a watch, you could be asking me for a business, man. Get my business license. Mm -hmm. Man, get me a truck to do a, do a, start me a plumbing business. Like, instead of you just being a roadie with me and being just on, a, a, being part of an entourage. Because you're going to come, you're going to get older and we get older. You're going to have to feed your family. We get off the road, you're going to have to get the kids. Something you're going to have to get your kids. You're going to have to get your girls. Something got to pay your bills. If you start moving towards that mentality, then you'll be like, hey, man, give me a, man, make sure my, I got a license so I can be able to take the kids to school and, then give me some money so I can be able to go and get a job. Not get some money, then you don't got no license, then you spend the money, you still back on the bus, and then you like, oh, you future friend, but you go on the bus. Nah, he future was to ask you to pay for your license. You didn't want that. I'm mm. trying to do prioritize. Like, it's about taking care of your priority. Then we got time to play later, but make sure you take care of your priorities first because we want to use this time to build each other up. Like, I'm building you, I'm help building you, you building me. So at the end of this thing, we be like, man, Shoot, dude, he went to college. I sent him back to college for two years. Or he went. To, I paid a college fund. I did this. I did that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and at the end of that, we got jobs. Now we created right. jobs. This is a thing to create. I help you to create a job so we can feed our families. We're not trying to take we take all the money for me so one person can feed a whole family. Right. You know what I'm saying? Let's like take the load off me. You help me help you, and then we build each other up. Ten years from now, twenty years from now, we own our own businesses together. Now you can help me. Right. I'll definitely salute that. That's hard. You know? Well, there it is, A-Town. Preacher Hands is in the building. I'm out right now. And it's family talking, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We talking with each other. It's like a, a normal day, you know what I mean? We just on the radio station. So shout out to the whole ATL. 